Hello everyone, thank you. Uh, my name is Adhan Dean and I'm an assistant, uh, they call us assistant attending instead of assistant professor at Memorial Stone Kitchen Cancer Center. Uh, we are uh, one of the top two cancer centers in the world uh, and we are only the other one. Um, and my lab focuses on uh, um, uh, open access AI in clinical and translational research. Okay. Uh, so today I'm going to uh, talk about uh, some of our groundbreaking research that, uh, that we are doing at uh, MSK uh, on uh, creating AI models and then translating them to clinic. Uh, as I'm going to focus on that. Uh, one of the disclosures is, is uh, I'm an advisory board member on one of the biggest uh, uh, open source uh, industry academic uh, AI consortium, Amunai, uh, which covers a lot of uh, other institutions too. Uh, and I advise on uh, surgery, radiation pathology, and pathology work. This is my team, uh, and uh, they are behind all the work that uh, I'm going to talk about today. So one of the main focuses of uh, my lab is to do clinical translation. We don't just do it AI for the sake of doing it, uh, we also translate it into clinic. Uh, and this is a very important quote that I recently came across and I think this, quote, this kind of leads the philosophy that we've been working on for the past couple of years. Uh, that you have, so I'm just going to quote it, that go better. You had time to absorb change, now you are introducing it to your colleagues and although you might be fully on board, they need the time and space to absorb it as well. You might be comfortable with the change because you helped create, craft it, give them the same grace and sense of control and they come along just as you. So this is very true for clinical or healthcare uh, uh, applications. Because uh, anyone and everyone who has worked in this space knows that uh, these applications take five or six years uh, or more to uh, go to clinic if you are completely on board for that. And you have, uh, obviously, you have to bring on board the clinicians, patients, um, and the hospital administration as well. So we do a lot of work across multiple domains. Uh, uh, and I'm going to talk uh, specifically about uh, 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 two applications that we have taken to clinic. Uh, we have figured out reimbursement for these as well, and uh, they're undergoing regulatory approval for the New York State entity and followed by FDA approval in the next couple of years. So, uh, some of the applications that I'm going to focus on is uh, this thing called Deep Five. Uh, and I'm going to go a little bit more detail in uh, you know, what do I mean by that. Uh, this is open source and open access with all the training data, code, pre-trained models, etc. available online. Um, and uh, you'll be surprised that you know, with all every, with making everything open source, uh, uh, how can you take it to clinic or commercialize it? Uh, and we are going to show some, uh, this example in the next couple of slides. We have a couple of other cool AI models that we have come across where we can do tissue and cell level segmentation simultaneously given just the H and D images. And uh, I'm not going to delve more into these uh, going forward, but uh, you can look at our GitHub as well as, uh, as our websites for these. Uh, so, one of the challenges in AI is that uh, uh, in clinic you have these two modalities which are called HND and uh, immunohistochemistry. HND has been around since 1850s and that's how pathologists basically practice. Uh, they interpret this image, uh, whether it be a biopsy or a uh, tumor resection, put, them, uh, put it under the microscope and then they uh, interpret it and give their subjective interpretation that will be used to uh, assign you to a certain clinical treatment regimen. Uh, then you have, uh, uh, as uh, the speaker before me, uh, uh, so, so I've also talked about these protein expressions uh, uh, on uh, immunohistochemistry slide. Immunohistochemistry staining has been around since 1960s and has become one of the key drivers for companion the, the diagnostic assays for latest treatments like immunotherapy, etc. And then you have this uh, multiplex or high dimensional imaging, uh, which has been around since 2010 uh, and has become more prevalent now. 
still not clinically translated, but gives much more information as you can see. These are exact same slides that are restained with these multiple stains. And you can see there is much more that you can unpack with this high dimensional image. And given that if someone can create a custom protocol, stain protocol, where you can make a tumor uh, resection, you can stain it with, let's suppose, this high dimensional imaging uh, uh, platform, and then also stain it with the standard clinical staining as well. Now you can imagine, you know, using the generative AI and <coughs> the models that are coming uh, out, that we can take any one of these clinical modalities and we can virtually restain it with this high dimensional imaging uh, so that's what we did, and we became the first ones in the world to uh, basically achieve that. Uh, because one of the challenges with uh, uh, interpreting these uh, immunohistochemistry and HD images with traditional models was that you have to rely on manual annotations. And the biggest problem with manual annotations, is, uh, especially in pathology, uh, uh, is that it's very subjective. So the pathologist disagreement among, uh, for let's suppose for immune cells is greater than 60 percent. So basically it's garbage in and garbage out uh, for all the models that are out there trying to predict immune cells from just these images. And uh, hence we have to be very careful when you even commercialize it or you know you try to take it to pharma or clinic that these are the uh, underlying discrepancies that you have to work on. And hence creating a completely objective data set in terms of annotation via the high dimensional imaging, you have to create it once and then you will be able to deploy it uh, across the board. And this is exactly what we did. Uh, this paper is now published in Nature Machine Intelligence, CPPR, Mikai, the top machine learning as well as uh, uh, medical journals. Uh, so the idea is that you take a simple clinical IHC uh, and using a multitask deep learning or AI model, you can translate it into this high dimensional imaging uh, uh, modality and you can also do segmentation and classification simultaneously. And with this, uh, uh, basically just training on IHC, what we were able to do is uh, out of the box we uh, work for h &E as well because uh, uh, this hematoxylin channel is common to both IHC as well as h &E. And uh, uh, this has worked out uh, quite successfully for us. We have, uh, uh, in January 2022, we launched our open access uh, platform, uh, deeplight.org, where uh, no sign-in is required. Anyone from the world can uh, upload their images taken by using their own cameras uh, and microscopes. You can upload it to our platform, and we do live uh, image analysis. So even now you can just open up the website, uh, try out either these samples or anything that you have in uh, clip. Uh, so with that, the latest stats are we have around 1700 sessions, uh, uh, user sessions daily uh, with more than 250 unique users from all over the world, spanning US, Canada, uh, Sweden, uh, Nigeria, Kenya, even Afghanistan, Pakistan. New Zealand, Vietnam, uh, Japan. So in Japan, in fact, we are working very closely with our collaborate, uh, collaborators in University of Tokyo, Dr. Shumpei and Emma, uh, to uh, train another deep life model with one of the world's largest pan cancer data sets from Japan, uh, uh, spanning 2,000 patients. Uh, and we are also going to release that on our uh, platform. Again, no login required. Anyone can upload their image and get the results. So fast forward to uh, September 1st this year, uh, we have created a commercial grade whole slide image viewer uh, for deep light. Uh, we have integrated that within our digital pathology dashboard, uh, also with the CERN COFAP, uh, meaning that we can take uh, physical slides, we can digitally scan them, uh, push it to our digital pathology uh, work list or dashboard. Uh, pathologist comes, clicks the icon for uh, Deep Life Style Viewer. Deep Life Style Viewer opens up and they see the score that we provide. 
and uh, if they are satisfied, they are going to click it, and it goes into our uh, server copac, and the reimbursement uh, process starts. For this, we have uh, uh, officially clinically validated the model. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, we figured out early on that there is this CPT code 88361, which has around five to twelve dollars difference between manual count and automated count, and since we do 200,000 slides a year, you can multiply that by this profit margin that we are going to generate for our cost of it. Uh, and uh, we have done technical validation. We have taken this to New York State uh, for LDT or laboratory developed test approval. Um, and we are going to uh, uh, start doing this. So now the power of open access. And again, all the data set pre-trained models, code, everything is completely available online. Uh, there is nothing proprietary that we have hidden. Uh, and anyone can basically use it. Uh, there has been analytical clinical validations across multiple uh, tumor types that have been done and ha are uh, being published right now as I speak. Uh, and because of the open access nature of this, pathologists from all over the world are uh, basically uploading their images, getting the results, and uh, doing their own clinical validation without us being involved at all. We are not part of their, these publications, we are not part of these uh, studies that they are doing, we are just providing them the backbone and the platform to be able to do this, and they are doing it very aggressively. Uh, people in the research space are publishing based on deep light as a backbone, a lot of studies for outcome predictions, tumor subtyping, survival, etc. as well. Uh, and this is an amazing trend to see uh, going forward. Uh, and this study, uh, uh, I'm not going to go into detail, but this is a study from uh, Afghanistan, where you know there was this data that was released for pan tumor, uh, triple negative breast cancer, Lung, uh, lung cancer, head and neck, uh, uh, head and neck squamous cell carcinoma, gastric cancer that was released by Roche uh, and uh, uh, for immunotherapy, ILC-CD3, CD8 staining. And within five days, this group from Afghanistan had uploaded that to Deep Life and gotten the results and published the study on that. Basically validating Deep Life uh, just on their own and without using any of the uh, training data for this model. And uh, uh, this was an interesting quote that came out was deep life out of the box without being fine tuned or retrained, outperformed all the models trained on the same samples. Deep life had an average uh, precision of 0.85, uh, uh, versus the best retina net uh, model that was reported in that uh, paper, trained on the same samples. So I think this is something very encouraging that uh, you are not doing research. Uh, uh, just for the sake of doing research, but you are also helping or enabling others from all over the world without knowing how to code to do research and publish papers. Again, that's uh, something amazing. Uh, again, we have done a lot of clinical validations uh, where uh, uh, with the, the incumbents in the commercial space, like Arterio, Mindy from uh, Europe, 3D Hestec, which are the top performing vendors in the space. And uh, uh, we have basically outperformed them by a large margin on uh, these clinical validations. So these are two different clones. Uh, and you can see the numbers that we report for uh, Deep Life versus the ones that uh, we report for the commercial vendors as well as for the performance. The same study, after it was published, uh, since we have large user base from all over the world, from developing countries, Eight pathologists, basically, or nine pathologists, came together and said that you know we will do a study on our own uh, from Kenya, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Vietnam uh, to uh, validate deep life on their own samples. And uh, uh, what we saw was P1 uh, is a manual reference count, uh, and with respect to that, we see AI, which is deep life, and all the other pathologists. And you can see that uh, deep life gets the highest importance. And again, these are blinded evaluations. We were not involved in these studies at all. And uh, 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 this is something very important. Uh, so 
one of the biggest challenges in digital pathology is that you uh, you need uh, uh, expensive scanners uh, to translate these uh, innovations to chemistry uh, or bridge this gap between digital and uh, computational pathology. So what we are doing now is uh, working uh, with some of these colleagues in developing countries who cannot afford uh, expensive scanners or infrastructure or cloud compute and all of that. Uh, we are just allowing them to now take, uh, create videos uh, which we will uh, digitally transform into whole slide images. Uh, and uh, for example, you can see an example here where we have created new algorithms to take these videos and uh, create uh, whole slide images that we can plug into computational pathology, pathology tools for analysis. Uh, and the quality is really uh, uh, aligned with you know, what you will get from uh, whole slide image scanners. Uh, we are also uh, for immunotherapy uh, because it's a big deal now uh, in terms of the response rates uh, for cancer patients. We have also created new models to uh, uh, perform better on using these libraries. So the other part that I'm going to quickly talk about is radiation oncology, where uh, we are uh, taking state-of-the-art AI models to clinic for dose prediction, radiation dose prediction, and what's going to get delivered uh, to the patients. Uh, these are some of the tools that we have created. Uh, but I'm just going to skip ahead and just talk about this latest tool that we are about to release with Varian, uh, who are who have basically 80% of the market penetration for linear accelerators. Uh, so what we are doing is we are creating open source, open access tools where anyone from anywhere in the world can take, uh, let's go, CT images and translate that to uh, a radiation, a clinically deliverable radiation dose. Uh, and uh, this four pi package, which is available here, which was just released two weeks ago, um, is being created with Masood Darabrishay, who is one of the world's uh, leading experts in uh, large-scale optimization radiation treatment planning, and has created uh, uh, something called ECHO, which is deployed at NSK and has treated more than 8,000 patients up till now. Uh, no uh, manual inter intervention needed. So we are releasing this code pi package to the community as a whole uh, for all the commercial entities, uh, industry, academia, uh, where we have created the entire workflow where you can bring your own data, you can create, either use our MSK deployed algorithms, uh, or you can create your own algorithms, benchmark them, within Eclipse, which is the uh, uh, being uh, provided uh, software uh, uh, complement to the linear accelerators, and then you can plug it back into your commercial uh, linear accelerator. And with this, you will be able to, for the first time in open source, open access space, you'll be able to go from the starting point of your CT scan all the way to clinically deliverable dose, uh, which will treat patients. Uh, we have done some work with the uh, ARI uh, on the uh, uh, surgery side as well, but I'm just going to stop here and uh, uh, take questions. Thank you. I think we have time for one question for Dr. Nadine. I really enjoyed uh, uh, your talk. I saw very quickly when you did the validation, you showed a Kappa statistic. Yes. Is that on a pixel basis or is it on a feature basis? So it's normally on a feature basis because pixel level, uh, there's a lot of background noise, etc. And these are manual scores that pathologists do by counting specific cells on the slide. So, and those will be reported as part of their clinical report that oncologists will take and assign a certain treatment regimen uh, based on. Okay. So the features are identified by the, uh, by the pathologist. Exactly. Thank you.